The old Royal High sits in an absolutely crucial part of Edinburgh's cityscape. There it is with this gorgeous skyline. And the skyline in this city is of immense importance. It was built uh, at a time that uh, classical Edinburgh was being created. This was the embodiment in stone of the Scottish Enlightenment. And there is this magnificent example of Greek revivalist architecture. It also is an example of Scotland's educational endeavor. It's very important to preserve that. Very easy to ruin it. The original aim of the Royal High School Preservation Trust was to find a suitable use for the building, which was both sustainable and had cultural value to the city. We very much see the building as a public building. That's what its origins are. And we felt that it should be an expression of the best ideals of the people of Edinburgh. We were incredibly lucky that the needs of St. Mary's matched this requirement so very well. St. Mary's Music School has always had outstanding pupils and has been very lucky to have um, a whole range of outstanding teachers. But what's missing um, at the moment is an outstanding building. We've been in the present building for roughly 20 years and even in that time the school's gradually expanded. We want to offer the fantastic fabric, if you like, around that musical education that we really need. The key brief that we gave to the architects was that any new elements would have to be very discreet, they'd have to be very subservient to the original Hamilton building. And what Richard Murphy has designed is a very low-lying series of buildings, which are actually lower than the Victorian buildings that they would replace. But what's also particularly brilliant about the plan is it allows the space to be divided in two. So it has not just a public approach, it also has a secure approach for the school. We actually re-engage the building with the city through its Regent Road frontage. So we end up with almost a perfect interlocking use of the buildings. The school will be slightly larger, so we'll be able to educate more people. And what it would mean would be in actual fact that we could really open our doors to Edinburgh, to Scotland and internationally, and a whole range of musical activities could be happening. And so we're becoming much more of a community asset than we can possibly be in our present location. For me personally, the vision of Edinburgh's future, which ties into Scotland's future, should have culture and music so much at the heart of it. I think that is definitely demonstrated in the summer with Edinburgh Music Festival and Edinburgh International Festival, but there's more that we can do all year round and there's more we can do that is cross-generational and there's more that we can do in terms of locations being front and centre. I think the move of the music school could capitalise on that collective spirit enormously. Scotland is a musical nation. We have a wonderful living music tradition. This is not an elitist musical tradition, it is a musical tradition that has deep roots in the Scottish psyche. Here is a real chance for this city to further cement 
its international reputation as a great cultural center. Edinburgh is Venice, Edinburgh is Vienna, Edinburgh is Paris. Uh, we have to be very careful what we do with that extraordinary heritage. It's not about doing things because we have to. It's not about expediency. It's about doing things as well as we can. Let's have one of our greatest buildings being used as it was intended to be used, as a place of the highest education. And let's allow one of our great buildings to be repopulated by the people of Edinburgh and actually used and enjoyed by both the citizens and visitors to the city. Part of a living, vibrant, forward-looking community.